Tim, and water, oxygen, and pizza in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Put your back I'm, I'm dropping the gloves. A little hairy. Little hairy. Go on the puck. I don't know half of the people, so I got to yell at somebody. I'm, they're micing me up right now. Like, this is the the 50th uh, anniversary celebration for Bob White. Huh? You stickers for your car. Your value of your car will go up. You put these on. <laughs> What's going on, bro? How are you? Did you check in and everything? I got one of those. Yeah. Did you get the keychain and stuff? Telling friends, even college teammates, that I was coming to play in a 20-year uh, alumni game. They're like, that's pretty cool because it doesn't exist elsewhere. Let me catch my breath real quick. <laughs> oh, I can't backtrack. Too old. Don't shoot it. She can't handle that. <laughs> You're gone. Get out. <laughs> we might have won states a few more times if you scored those goals. You're gonna, you're gonna let Kate Howard beat you to the puck. To see it come full circle, to see, makes my heart warm. I think they'll all be back for the 50th. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that all these alumni came back after 50 and 20 years just proves that it's not just about winning championships. It's about community. Our, our vision when we were looking at a business to open up and trying to select a location where we felt that our morals, our values, the type of business that we wanted to run would be accepted. And the St. Albans community was a perfect fit all the way around. Our success has been a direct result of the culture that we've brought to this community and the culture that the community has brought to us. This community really embodies your traditions of work ethic and discipline. That's what really you know, resonates to us and why we've been so attracted to this community and like being a business in this community, because it speaks to what we stand for. You know, when you sign up, you know, to play BFA hockey, it's a commitment. Everybody takes pride in how we play and what we do. This is pretty special to work with 16, 17, 18 year olds who work as hard as anybody and aren't afraid to work, all for the purpose of being able to wear three letters across their chest. I look back and I got a, I'm watching him go down right across the face with a stick and shattered his nose. It was my centerman, a guy named Lester Eaton. When he got to the hospital, he said they were going to cut his jersey off. And he said, there's no way you're going to cut this jersey off. It means too much to me. And he kept that air, uh, jersey on for almost three weeks and covered in blood. I think that was passion. That was tradition. We take care of some business, improve a bit, and maybe the last thing is distraction. For now, we can't have any distractions, meaning on and off the ice, in school, etc. Curfew on dances. Curfew on New Year's Eve. Super Bowl, Super Bowl we got to be home by ha uh, right after halftime. You gotta you got pay a price. You know, collecting the phones on the bus trip, the girls don't like it, but it forces them to, to communicate. I think everyone just knows to trust the process. It doesn't matter who you are. Or how good you are. Or, yeah, or how good you are. Whoever works hard and whoever wants to be out in the ice, they'll fill that role. We have expectations of blocking shots, no matter what team we're playing. Well, we are on, you start at uh, Duke's Fitness and you run all the way up to Jolly at Collins Pearly Sports Complex and then all the way back. It was painful, it was miserable. We would do it in snowstorms, we would do it in, it didn't matter what it was, it was, you know, 10 below. My brother Connor might have had a record for wheel runs. If you're not in line, you'll run six miles, you'll run a wheel as an option coach, but whoever needs uh, conditioning to do it. And I took a big step and signed the whole team up. People around the state always ask, what is the magic up there? They respect each other, they respect the program, they respect coaches. Wicked recovery after a little flip to the middle. <laughs> and you love making it look easy. It's beautiful, but don't make it hard when I'm gonna do a sausage to the middle. Yeah. When you go indirect and it's gone, we're gone, we're gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah good, good recovery, great recovery. My dad, he was watching a game while Coach Duclon was still playing. My dad was standing right behind the net, 
and Coach Duquan let a slap shot go from the blue line, and he said he can just remember if that puck ever caught anyone and kill someone. <laughs> 23 when I started. BFA was crazy enough to hire me. You know, and I could play, but I couldn't coach. The former UVM star was named head coach at BFA tonight, replacing Red Gendron. Is that All I can promise is that I'll do my best. I had Tom McDonald as an assistant coach, so he had some experience. He coached football at BFA. You know, without him, I wouldn't have got through my first six years. My house would have been burned in St. Albans. <laughs> Always has high expectations. He's been, been able to maintain that consistency for the 30 years. When we had Willie McKinnon here on Mondays, that's when the roster got changed. He would walk in the locker room and say, Smith, Smith, switch jerseys. Well, if you went from the orange to the red, you knew you got demoted and one got promoted. There was a hush in the locker room uh, until you got out in the ice. Just because you're on the first line, you might be the best. If you didn't work hard, you didn't hold your position. And that goes to today. He holds himself to the same standards he holds us to. But I think it's just the way. He teaches his way, and uh, it's fair. You know, I've got some really, really good assistants. I and mean, we run things across all our minds. I do it because it's there's something about BFA hockey that just will draw you back in. From top to bottom, the commitments uh, Coffee and Rillo made through the years to keep girls hockey in St. Albans strong is unwavering. Thinking about the kids and putting the kids and players first and um, not worrying about what anybody else has to say. They stress the value of friendship, of family, of even your faith. Do I necessarily talk religion with my players? Not, not directly, but I think the me same messages are there all the time that we got to treat our opponents with goodwill, with respect. Both of the coaches are more than just coaches to all of us. At the heart of Luke always is about developing people into the best people that they can be. It's a BFA's philosophy too. I think it's a Dan Marlow. It's a Toby Duclon. It's, it's Red Gendron. You want to do your very best and you want to make sure the X's and O's are taken care of. But when push comes to shove, it's, it's how well is your team playing? Our coaches just mature us and just get us ready for after high school. Constantly going to the gym, constantly waking up early in the morning for early practices, six days a week and then games two days a week. Ever since I was a little kid, growing up watching BFA hockey and you could tell right away um, the expectations and everything the program stands for. Some people think it's a joke that we all follow the rules, but I just point to the banners and say that's what got us there. During our semifinal game against CVU, I took kind of a funny hit and I separated my AC joint in my shoulder. My mom works at the hospital, so she pulled a few strings, got me in to see a surgeon right off. He basically said there's no more damage to be done, so if you can deal with the pain, you can play. Uh, the injury was serious, but he, he's a very you know mentally tough guy. He, he got through it in the game, and it was uh, it was a big thing for us. Oh, behind the net. Over to uh, Hunterford. There still is the thirst for the kid to wear the jersey. You know, that hasn't gone away at all. When the momentum started in the early, early 70s, it hasn't stopped. And you, you see all the banners hanging there. And this our goal to be a part of those banners. When we are conditioning during practice, we stop facing the banners. And that just reminds me that like all the work we do every single day is towards a common goal that we all share as a team. I'm sure that they want to continue the success, you know, to be a part of, of the past history. It was about winning for the town.
going to do it. The Comets have three beat it. It's the Bob Whites for the 14th time. Behind the net, behind the net, wrap around, score! This is a good luck. And that's it. It's over as BFA wins the Division I state championship. Anahan sends it all the way in. That's a hat trick from Anahan. She's going to win their sixth straight state championship. People ask me where I'm from. I'll say St. Albans, Vermont, and they'll say, oh, the hockey town. That's going to do it as the state championship comes back to St. Albans. Yeah. In 11, Vermont Division I girls hockey state champion. We're allowing our players to believe in something that's bigger than they are. One, two, three, believe! Um, I remember being younger and watching Ellen play. And Tarsha's going to bring it up the middle. Ellen. Four on two. Ellen will reach the line. I was always looking at those great hockey players because I wanted to be like them. Christine Dodd, 2002. Christine Dodd. She found out that she had a, a heart defect that required her to put a machine essentially in her chest. It would shock her heart and, and keep her alive. In addition, she suffered from arthritis and was on heavy medication in order just to be able to function every day. And in the championship game in our second year, the medication made her really sick. And just towards the end of the third period, tie game, she went into the locker room and, and vomited. I didn't think she was coming back because of how sick she was, but she came back. Roughly maybe five, four or five minutes into that overtime, took the puck from just over center ice and weaved through you know, two or three players. And I, I can still see the picture in my head of her scoring on the backhand over the goalie's shoulder, top shelf. That sort of set the foundation for what we could achieve. That, that if Christine Dodd could do what she did under the adversity that she was under, then, you know, we can do this every year. They inspire us to be the best athletes, the best players, and it's just, even if you haven't met them in person, their legacy is something that you admire and you want to work towards to help keep their legacy alive. You know, in St. Albans, the winters are really long, but you're probably going to find everyone here on a Wednesday night, regardless of how cold it is. Because they know they're going to hear that horn, but also, too, it's going to be physical. Are you willing to sacrifice for everyone else on this team? Our whole town comes out, we just kind of leave it all out there. It's fun to be a part of it. Um, you know, we stand. BFA. And we stand. It hypes us up, it gets us ready to play. The, the cheering, the chants, every game, the easy button after we score. Uh, every game I feel the pressure. Put everything out there on each play and each shift and give it all because I know I'm never going to get it back. Your number two BFA Comets host the number three seed Essex Hornets as the number two Bob White's host, the number three Rice Knights. We have a spot to advance to the state championship division one Wednesday night. Three on two, two line mates on the near side, pass in front, that's tip. Quick shot there and she scores! Jody Grattan. The enthusiasm for the games, especially the big games, so Ellis is on his game in the late stage of this uh, this third period. He managed to get away with that one. Owen oh, Benoit with head of steam coming in. Owen Benoit! Wiegen, Wiegen with it. Quick move there. Another quick move. She shoots. She scores! Going to grab pass in front. No one there. Semantic's going to pinch in. Quick shot. She scores! All or nothing here. All or nothing. 
as Rice ties it with less than one minute to and go. And we will be going on to overtime. They've, they've done a nice job executing the game plan uh, so far, and I think if we stick to that, and then we should be just fine. Congratulations, you got a hockey team here. Tony Gutterson wins it. It's well, well deserved. I'll say There's a bit of disappointment when you don't win that last game of the year. You know, ultimately, that's the goal for, for every team. I think it, the life lessons that you learn, uh, the ability to overcome obstacles throughout the year, and you can never take those relationships of building a family uh, away. It's not always about winning and losing. It's, it's they do the right thing. They're just great human beings. You know, We're fortunate to have them on, the, on our hockey team. Um, but more importantly, I know that uh, they've left a good legacy here and great role models for the, the younger kids. Play with high energy and great intelligence because they do. Okay? Questions, are we good? We're good. Okay, uh, 515 bus. 515 bus, we'll start to meet this one. Definitely a lot of pressure, a lot of nerves before the game. I always, always have butterflies in my stomach for sure. He told me the other day that it was his dream of a lifetime. It means the world to him, actually. Uh, last night we were at home and he was, that was all on his mind was tonight's game. Do, this, do the stuff that we've talked about all winter long and execute a bit and we're, we're going to get rewarded. Tonight, it's about memories and it's about fun. Let's make some good ones together. Let's go. Let's go! This never gets old. There's a, a, a magic in the air. Delayed call there on Stowe. Be ready, Blue, be ready. Now you only got two minutes, you gotta be high. Okay, we gotta be smart. Get some pucks in. BFA with it. Quick move by Merrill. Quick shot. There he goes! Bob White's up 2-0. How about that work by audio? That's audio. And Hart gets a great feed from Bratton for the 3-0 lead. Everybody, turn our heads, nice and easy, make some plays. We got 15 minutes of work and guess what? Here you go, right there, on okay? Let's go. I think everyone gave 110%, played with heart, and played the BFA way. A great game. Gave it our all full 55 minutes, and we brought another banner back to St. Hope. When we won the championship my sophomore year and we came back into town and we had a police escort all around town. 
We had our parents in the back honking, and we had people in Taylor Park and people outside restaurants like cheering for us. Like this community really loves this hockey team. But this is more than success. This is uh, an attitude and a culture that envelops everybody in the community. It's a blue collar community, uh, not afraid to work. We, we're the railroad city. We're the real city, it, long hours, hard work, and then take the piece of the dairy community, and that's our heritage. They're out in the woods, they're, they're out fishing, none of them are losing their minds on an Xbox. And when you see them on the ice, they're out there pounding in a corner, lining someone up from the blue line. It gets instilled in us that that's what you do, you know, it doesn't matter, you work hard. You know, people are really real. Um, you know where you stand at all time, pretty much at all times. It's not, you know, it's nice. It's uh, it's, it's very authentic, I think, up here. And so I think it's a reflection of the fabric of this community. I think we have a lot to be proud of. I think there's just more of a connection. Like we all just bond in different ways. 21 years old when he passed away from a heart attack. Well, his dad called me that morning. Um, losing him was tough. I was still young. I got out of college. So you expect to like watch them in their careers. So not being able to see him finish out his was hard. Connor had a special presence. And if we can have all of our kids grow up to be like him, he had a wide variety of interests, and I think that's why he connected to so many people here in the community. He was just an easygoing guy and competitive like the rest of us. But we all know he played how he played and the person he was on and off the field, the ice, and it's just something that we try and follow and something to aspire to be like. I'm beyond blessed to have a community like this, you know, be as supportive like to myself and to my family members and to want to, you know, keep Connor's memory going on. That's a reflection of how this community uh, came together and embraced the family uh, to show their love. You know, um, Connor will always be a part of this program. Even though we're boys and girls, we're still BFA hockey and we're all conveying the same message. It's about how do you become the best that you can be. And we, and we believe in it. We really do, and I think it works. There's a reason why there's so many banners hanging in this rink. Yeah, it's great to win championships, and it's great to have a tradition, but it's more important to take care of people. Shot by Bellows, didn't get too far. Here's a chance with a trip! Oh, and a roll by the open side. He got another crack at it. He scores! The Canadians win the game in overtime. John gave this community a sense of Miguel hope. Miguel is the pass to Leclerc, the shot, he scores! John Leclerc continues blazing hot. To see him have uh, great success uh, was just unbelievable for this town. And, and all of the kids that looked up to him. Fed along by Svoboda, around behind. Henry Pat score! Leclerc with a hat trick! Kids looked up to that and said, wow, I want to be like that someday. Uh, just like they did with Toby Duclon, you know, a few years before that, is everybody wanted to, to play at UVM. You can look up to Toby being drafted by the St. Louis Blues. Christy Corrigan helped develop the culture of this Program. Christy had cystic fibrosis. She was a Comet and she is what Comet hockey is. Uh, sharing pizza parties in her hospital room and you know, ha sneaking off to the rink when she was supposed to be out to dinner with her family just because she wanted to be a part of something. Any time that we had a tournament or you, know, you wore a t-shirt that said Christy Corrigan on it, you, you wanted to make her proud and make her family proud. Building any great organization takes a lot of people. Bill Beanie, who went on for a 
the store career at Middlebury College and Sam Simmons. You're talking Peter Milletta. Bob West, my great grandfather. Art Christie. About, uh, Bob Ashton. Dick Hungerford. It's, you know, and I also think of Dr. Holmes, Dr. Tulip. It's all about being a leader, which is about serving others. And that's what Doc Tulip did. And then just, just what Birdman did, you know? John Haynes. John Haynes. He went in the locker room and gave talks to the kids about life and, and everything else, and they love it. Birdman just ripped off 25 push-ups there. I'd, I'd be surprised the officials would let him onto the ice. Uh, Red was here when I first came here. Uh, I'm starting my 37th year, and um, Red was the hockey coach at the time when I arrived. Uh, coach Jen ran a tight ship. The work ethic that he instilled in them is second to none. The University of Maine from here. He had stints with the NHL. He was he he he, he was he was a hockey nut in high school. Mr. Pierce offered me the job at 6,500 a year, but he said for that much money, I had to go to Burlington and get my bus driver's license. And like I said, at the expense of forgetting somebody, everybody is a part of that. They do not come any better than Dan Marlow. I can tell you that. And the hours that that man has put in to make sure that BFA Athletics is. Uh, well-respected is immeasurable and so I, I'm incredibly grateful that I've had the opportunity to have him in my life and to receive his guidance because he's he's given so much to me um, to help me guide me as, a, as, a, as an adult and that it, it's he's giving you tools not for tomorrow but for life nobody gives more than this community including you. And it's because people care about you. Imagine that.